YouTube! In today's video, we're going to look at why the VV fam are fighting against each other. Some are for and some are against, and we're going to talk about that a bit later. But before we get there, let's have a look what's going on on the main screen with Omi, Akomi, and NFTs and all that kind of cool stuff. So here we go. Let's start off with the first thing, and that is this BitConnect Victims. BitConnect! Yeah, that's my really bad impression. Uh, BitConnect Victims, you can submit before December the 16th. So hopefully this video gets out before then. Um, I've been having some issues lately. I've I've had uh, you know lots of plumbing done in my house so therefore my studio was upturned so I didn't get to do a video for a while uh, but now I'm back so hopefully I've got this in time for you December the 16th is your deadline so if you haven't claimed if you got scammed by BitConnect you can now claim to get some of your money hopefully most of your money back again so uh, therefore make sure you go and follow the details which I will put in the uh, the, the description below up next, we have got this. This is Aurox. This is absolutely awesome. This is a wallet that I talked about on one of my videos a couple of weeks back. Now, I actually had someone reach out to me um, one of my videos from ages ago because you probably noticed that I've actually cleaned the channel out. I've taken quite a few videos off that aren't relevant anymore and I'm leaving the ones that are relevant and there's a couple on there about how to secure your crypto and how hackers use smart contracts to steal your money. And this guy reached out to me and he said, oh, I use Bakery Swap to do something. Uh, you know, I seem to not have my money in there anymore. Is this, do, do you know what this is? And we basically did some digging and he went back and forth with me, etc., etc. And we found out basically what had happened is he had gone to a website, uh, He'd gone to a YouTuber, essentially, um, and they were talking about Illuvium staking, and they put in their comments, they put a link to the Illuvium staking. Now, you're probably like me, and you trust most of what the links that YouTubers put up, which we really shouldn't do, because it's a really easy way for scammers to scam us as well. And in this case, what they did was they sent this guy to a fake bakery swap, and then he staked his Illuvium, and he lost it, basically. Uh, and that was the end of that. So, and the reason that is, is because of the fact that he was using Metamask, he went through, clicked through, he didn't go to CoinMarketCap, he didn't check what the address was or anything like that, which I understand a lot of people don't do that. But this wallet is absolutely brilliant, and this is just coming out. Now, now, I have seen other uh, wallets sort of popping up as similar as well. I haven't had a chance to look into these, but this one I have looked into uh, because basically what it does is a simulation of the transaction. So therefore, if you go to a site like that, what you can do is you can simulate the tra transaction, which will happen straight away incidentally. You just push the button, you can see just in the little corner up there. Um, and what will happen is it will actually simulate the transaction and let you know how much you're going to lose from your wallet if that transaction goes through. So where you're expecting to pay like a $10 gas fee or something like that, it'll actually pop up and let you know in real time, in words, exactly how much they can officially take from your wallet if you were to go ahead with that transaction, which I think is an absolute game changer and it's gonna be a fantastic thing and it's gonna stop happening what happened to this chap here with Bakery Swap. Not only that, when you go to like Bakery Swap or something like that, your Allbox wallet when you're using it has actually got a function in it so that if you go to a fake site, it checks the registered site and it tells you that it's a fake site and it pops up with a blasting uh, thing saying don't go to this site it's a fake site etc etc so there's so many features in there uh, that are really really good now full disclosure um, if you do go and download the wallet if you use some of the functions on it that uh, are charged for or whatever um, then I do get a kickback from that so but that's not the reason I'm telling you about it the reason I'm telling you about it is because of the fact that it really does seem to me like a really safe way to be able to use uh, you know the web3 system because because MetaMask, as good as it is, it doesn't have some of these things built in. Um, and basically what Oryx does is it, it works instead of MetaMask. So you can add it on as well as MetaMask if you want to. But what happens is when you go to a website, as you would normally connect with MetaMask and you click on the MetaMask logo, what will happen instead is Aurox will pop up and it will just say, do you want it with Aurox wallet or do you want it with MetaMask? And then you just click on the button and then you're through. So it's basically the same as MetaMask, but as you can see, it's a lot sleeker, it's a lot cleaner. Also, they don't have all that thing where you have to add tokens in and all that sort of things automatically in there. And a really cool thing about this as well, which is really good, um, obviously you get rewarded for using it which is brilliant as well so you get rewarded in Oryx token and not only that you also get your own ETH address now it's not your own as in like like you would buy an, an ETH domain or something like that but it is um, you know whatever you want it to be dot Oryx dot ETH so that means that if somebody wants to send you money you no longer have to say to them right, let me copy and paste this and put this in and blah 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 you can literally just like you would with an ETH uh, domain you can say to them okay just send it to uh, I don't know Bob Thomas at Oryx dot ETH uh, dot ETH, ETH. 
And then basically whatever they send to Bob Thomas at orex.eth will automatically go to your wallet, assuming you put the Bob Thomas bit at the beginning. <laughs> so therefore you get your own ETH domain, which means you don't have to go out and buy one, which is great. So uh, therefore you get all of that as part of the wallet as well. But anyway, I digress. I'm gonna do a full video on this wallet at some point to show you all the ins and outs and the workings of it, because I think it's absolutely brilliant. It's really nice to use. And uh, yeah, it's one of my favorite things at the moment. So I thought I'd let you know about it. So next up is this, uh, and that is the Naked Wow. 10% gross fee was outlined in their white paper, and again, in tokenomics models are released in medium as late as 2020. This is the Naked Wow talking about the fact that VV said when we first uh, was doing the buybacks that 10% minus app fees, that's what they said, which was 30%. So that was like 10% of the gross revenue, then minus 30% app fees, and then the rest was going to buybacks. Now, this has kind of changed over the years um, since I remember it as well. And, and he's pointed out that they actually did say this and they put this out. Now, most of that stuff has disappeared now, but he's managed to find it. Now, he did ask Reese about this. And um, Reese basically said that, uh, yeah, that's why they're doing the burn from the... the the, you know, the extra burn and all that kind of thing. And um, the thing is about it is that I, I, it's kind of annoying. I'll be honest. It is kind of annoying that they're now sort of flicking and changing. But the reason they're flicking and changing is because if we didn't, like we don't have the buybacks anymore. We're getting a one-off burn and then we don't have any buybacks. But the reason they're doing that is because of regulation, as we know, and trying to skirt the regulation. Um, and they said that by doing this new tokenomics model, then it is a lot better and it burns more only. And this is the thing, um, Foster and I think Dan uh, did some videos on it as well um, about the fact that it's going to burn a lot more. Now, they just use projections of what could happen. Are they right? Are they wrong? Well, yes, um, because they could be right and they could be wrong also. So take those with a pinch of salt. However, what I will say is it does bring back a few of the things which I was really excited about, which is the burning um, of Omi with gems. So therefore, if you can buy your gems with Omi and then you can burn them in the, the marketplace or burn them in the, you know, in the, in the primary market, that means that a lot more Omi is going to burn from circulating supply. Now, Bruce did say in a recent interview as well that they may even get rid of the reserve wallet completely at some point because they don't really need it anymore because they don't need to go and top up the thing anymore. So basically what will happen then is instead of your Omi going to the reserve wallet and then people buying stuff and then it being taken away, which it kind of is, what they would do instead, which, which in incentivizes people to buy NFTs, but I don't think they need incentivization for that. So what they'll do instead is they'll get rid of the reserve wallet and then any OMI that you put into the system automatically gets burnt as the gems go, basically. So therefore that will be a um, basically the same way of doing it. The only difference is that they're not putting the OMI in the reserve and then the reserve slowly taking it out. It's essentially being burnt in the in the forefront and at the very beginning which would be great if that happens and that's like in a year's time but it won't make a lot of difference but i guess from morale point of view and from the way it seems like it's going to be easier because at the moment you could say that the burns in the reserve don't matter at all which they don't however they do matter when the new oup stuff comes in because omi will be coming from that system which is from circulating supply and going into the reserve wallet so therefore when you're burning things there you're essentially taking that omi out of transit you know out of circulation but it's not going straight away which is the kind of the issue and i guess that's why they're going to get rid of the reserve wallet um but anyway uh, yeah let me know what you think in the comments below uh, hopefully i've explained that how i how i think i've explained it it's a bit of a complicated subject but um crypto show 84 i believe that's his name i'll leave the details in the comments below he's got a great channel and on there he does a lot of deep dives um, one of the ones that's really good is um where he talks about the fact that everything is a food chain basically like in the simpsons where they have homer and all of these things going to him for food it's exactly the same with omi everything that goes on in the omi ecosystem basically basically pushes Omi into the reserve wallet, which then in turn gets burnt when you bought collectibles, or if they're gonna burn it in one go, then that will just vanish and disappear. So basically, when that OUP comes in, the more that people buy stuff, the more that the, or not the more that people buy stuff, sorry, the more that people um, transact in the app, the more fees and stuff that will go into there, and therefore that will burn the Omi from circulating supply. Anyway, um, but yes, talking about this anyway, so really, even though, it's not going to be a 10% gross fee anymore um, of the whole entire thing. They're going to do the one-off burn. And at the end of the day, they couldn't do that anymore because of regulation. So we sort of had a choice there, I suppose, or they had a choice. And that was either to cut it out completely and then just not do anything or try and replace it with something better. And they have, from what I can see, replaced it with something better. Um, that's my personal opinion. Again, let me know what you think in the comments. Admittedly, it does change your investment somewhat and it does change for what I originally invested into because of the fact that to me, the thing was it was like a wow buying lots of crypto uh, and never burn it, uh, never, never taking it basically. But the new features that they put in 
will help or will it probably burn more. However, that all depends on how much people use the VV app. If nobody uses the VV app, if nobody does anything in the VV app whatsoever, then it's gonna be nothing. It's not gonna do anything. But if people use the Omi to Gem situation and all that, which I think they will, you know, I think Vivi are putting in like $1 million worth of gems in the first place. Well, that's $1 million worth of Omi, isn't it? Now, if that Omi sells, or if them gems sell out within the first three days, that's $1 million worth of Omi that's burned straight away, isn't it? Because that means that somebody has put their Omi in to buy those gems. So therefore, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy to think about it. How long is it gonna to take to sell out a million dollars worth of OMI? I don't know. But then that's million dollars worth of OMI from the circulating supply. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of crazy to think about it. So when that gets implemented, yes, it should be a good thing. And uh, I think if you go and watch Foster's video or uh, Asian Dan, then uh, you'll be able to see, uh, you know, uh, all the stuff they say about it and their little projections uh, for what they think could happen in the future. So next up is this. Uh, 007 Daniel, that's, uh, that's Dan from uh, from Itomi, is listening and they've said they're looking into the possibility of burning the reserve sub-41 collectibles as they hadn't initially anticipated how sought after these low mints would be and it would be a disservice to collectors on the app to release the sub-41s themselves. Interesting. Uh, now, I've always known from the start, as many of us have, that they were keeping up to 41 because of the fact that they were putting them in museum and they were giving them to licensors and stuff like that. So, uh, to me, I don't really understand how they're going to burn the sub-41 collectibles. It's an interesting one. Um, some of them are already out there, obviously, so they can't burn them. So, you know, let me know what you think in the comments. Do you think it's needed or not? I... I guess I can understand the thing of people saying that when the sub 41s come out, then it means that the sub the 41s that people have worked hard to get to and paid a lot of money for are worth less, but they're still not worth that much less because, you know, anything under 100 people can't, you know, class as a good thing. And 41, at the end of the day, it is the number 41, not the number one. So it's obviously 40 more before that. And you could say that none of them are public. Well, they're not public, but they do give them to, you know, to different people and uh, they give them to licensors and licensors give them away as competitions. And it's, it's with the prerogative of the person to then sell it on if they want to. So therefore, you know, it's, uh, I guess, for, for low mint hunters, it's a, it's a bit of a, a, you know, a bugger. But I, I personally am not a low mint hunter, so it doesn't really affect me. But yeah, let me know what you think in the comments about that and uh, whether you think it's a good idea or not. Next up is this, Batman Blue and Yellow is coming to VV. Finally, the Todd Batman, the blue, what everyone's been waiting for, is finally coming. Now, if you hold a full set of Batman, Batman Season 1, I've got like two of them, I think. <laughs> uh, if you hold a full set, so if you've got a Todd, if you managed to get one of those originally, if you've got the uh, the Rizzo, uh, and then uh, what's the other two? I can't remember the other two. Anyway, the point is that if you hold any of those, um, then uh, all four of them, all five of them, however many there are, then you get an opportunity to be able to buy this. Now, is this one going to go crazy? I don't know. I, I, it's a tough one to call, but I, I don't think it's going to go anywhere massively above retail like people will think it will. I think it's going to be a bit like Pride 2 in the sense that Pride 1 was like the growl, everyone was saying how much it was worth, etc. And then when you bought Pride 2, it's it's gone a bit higher, but it's not, you know, it's nowhere near what the uh, the Pride 1 originally got to. Uh, not the Pride 1's doing any better at the moment, but you know, you get the idea. The point is that that was the first ever Gavin Shea on the or Gavin Shea, I don't know how you say it, on the uh, on the blockchain and that was the first ever uh, NFT for Vivi and essentially the first DC on the blockchain as well, uh, if you count GoChain, which you should do, then uh, that was the first ever one and that's why people go crazy for it, not because of the statue and not because of the color. So, you know, it'll be made as we've seen and uh, yeah, again, let me know what you think in the comments. So this is the final thing today, and that is the four and the FUD. We've got a lot of people fudding, we've got a lot of people for as well. This is all to do with the mods and the fact that the mods in Discord are getting uh, free collectibles. Now, they're not getting free collectibles, they're actually working for them. So, therefore, personally, I don't have an issue with it. I've always thought they would be getting paid or getting something in return anyway. You know, um, when projects reach out to us or something like that, they will often say, oh, I'll give you a free NFT or something like that because that is the currency of the thingy. I've worked for projects where they say, oh, you'll get a percentage commission on... Uh, you know, when, when we mint or something like that as well. Uh, in the end, we didn't end up minting and I didn't get anything. So I worked all that time for nothing. But, you know, it is what it is. You Sometimes you, you do stuff like that uh, to get experience or to, to, to whatever. Now, in this case, um, basically what Vivi do, from what I can gather, is that when you work, you accrue a certain amount of gems and then those gems can then be used to buy a collectible. 
So depending on how much time you've worked. Now, a lot of people, this is a great idea because that way you don't have to use your own money to buy the collectibles. People are up in arms about it because of the fact that they're saying, well, then that's basically us paying their wages. Uh, well, for a start, they don't have to pay, they don't have to sell it, is the first thing. Uh, and also, you know, this is this is the same in quite a lot of industries anyway. If you think about industries in the world, you know, like if you work in a casino, a lot of the time you get tipped by clients and the clients are essentially paying the wages. You know, it's just a normal thing. Um, when you go to, you know, in the States, especially everyone has a 20% tip. That goes towards paying the wages. Normally the wages are low because the tip's counteract that so therefore you could argue that we're always paying other people's wages in that sense and also a lot of the time what happens with these collectibles from what I can gather is they VV buy them off the floor and then give them to someone and then it's their choice if they want to sell it on or whatever they want to do but because they're doing that they're essentially helping the market as well because when somebody puts a collectible on there if they put it at a silly price and then VV buy it to then give it to their moderators then they've essentially bought off the market haven't they and they can do what they like with it so you know, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm sort of, I'm, I'm personally for this. Like, as I said, I believed that they were getting some sort of compensation anyway and get paid. I think they deserve it. They're in there doing their job that they do. You know, they help out from scammers. They help out from, you know, all this sort of stuff. Now, there's kind of a counter argument here, which is uh, Cavell put out a video talking about how they're essentially influencers and therefore they should disclose everything they do. Um, and they should disclose that they got paid because otherwise it's illegal. Well, I don't really believe they're influencers. For a start, apparently, when they went into Discord, if they had a YouTube channel, they had they told they had to stop it. You know, um, a perfect example is uh, Pudding Cheeks. Uh, Pudding Cheeks is now on the Comey team, and if you look on his channel, he's got no videos anymore. So I guess you can't be seen to then influence what's going on. So they stopped the YouTube channels and that kind of thing. I've never really been in Discord that much, but I've never seen them saying like, oh, you should buy this, you should buy this, like other people <laughs> often say. So therefore, you know, uh, I don't think they're influencing people to buy stuff. If people ask them a question about something, then obviously they're in the right to answer it and it's their personal opinion as well. But I don't see them as pumping their own stuff. And even if they did, Discord is a private community. So therefore, how can they be classed as an influencer uh, of doing the thing? If they then talk about that product on Twitter, again, does it really matter? matter. Um, you know, Cavell says that they're supposed to disclose, like if they talk about it on Twitter, they should say, oh, I bought this. But, you know, I see I see lots of different tweets from different people, various, um, Cavell himself tweets about um, quid quite a lot. But he doesn't put on every single tweet, oh, you know, I, I have received money from quid. Um, and I suppose you could argue that he should do really, because some people might read the tweet from way down where he said, I'm now getting a video from Twitter, or I'm getting paid by quid for this video. But according to the, the stuff that he read out on his channel, essentially he would have to do it on every single thing so that that way people would know that he has an affiliation with Quid as well, which I'm pretty sure he doesn't do. Uh, you know, Hello K, same thing. He got uh, paid for doing a video with Quid and then he put out a tweet, oh, that I think these sushi wraps are really, really good. You should go and buy some. I'm buying loads of these. Uh, and that essentially is being an influencer, but he didn't put at the bottom of it, oh, by the way, I, I got, a, you know, I was paid by Quid to say this. So I think there's a really gray area there, especially. And also these moderators, as far as I can see, they're not really influencers, are they? They're not, you know, I, I don't count myself as an influencer at all. I don't influence what people do. They make their own decisions and they choose. Influencers to me are people with millions and millions of followers. It's a gray area of what you can call an influencer, essentially, isn't it? Um, but then, like I said, you can have lots of gray areas with everything that goes on uh, in the world of crypto, especially. But there are a lot of projects that do this. They'll say, oh, you know, um, but you can work for us and we'll give you free NFTs or whatever, you know, in and many industries around the world. It's just the way it happens. So I don't think there's going to be issues with VV. I don't think there's going to be any legal issues. Um, I think the whole thing started from what I can gather because somebody who's had accounts restricted wasn't really happy and decided to put this bombshell out there for people to make videos about it um, and to try and boost it more than it is. And <clears throat> obviously some people in the community, they like making videos that, um, you know, that gain attention at the end of the day. Um, Cavell himself is a marketer. That's what he does. So therefore he puts his spin on everything uh, to give it a little bit more of a, you know, of, of a, well, I guess um, a, a harder a harder look so that that way uh, you think it's worse than it actually is but I don't think it's too bad at all I don't think it's illegal I, don't, I think it's a very big grey area there what we're considering I think there's a lot more stuff as Hello K said in one of his uh, tweets uh, to worry about more than that so you know do we really need to worry about it did it really need to be put out there probably not
But at the end of the day, if it gets views and it gets things, that's what, at the end of the day, that's what influencers and YouTubers are here to do. We're here to try and get views from you. You know, that's why we put the thumbnails with the different wording and stuff like that to get you to click. If you don't click, then we don't get views, simple as that. At the end of the day, we're all in it for something. Now, whether that be your recognition from a community, whether that be from getting free collectibles, uh, you know, Ikomi sent us a, a care package with a light in it and some t-shirts, like this t-shirt that I'm wearing now, um, and a few other bits. But that doesn't mean to say, you know, that I'm getting paid by them. I'm just, I just got a few things. So do I have to say on every single thing, oh, I actually received something from Ikomi? I suppose I do, because according to the thing that Cavell read out, you have to say whether it was from that product or a previous product, you have to tell people. So, you know, you could literally go on and on about this in, in, with these gray areas. And I think in terms of the law and how the law is, I don't think they would be that bothered about it, personally. But, you know, let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, I personally think that the moderators deserve to get paid for what they're doing and whether or not it comes of getting, you know, free stuff. And, you know, a, a perfect example as well. Look at um, Cavell or, or um, uh, Hello K or any of the guys who did the quid videos. They received uh, quid tokens. So it wasn't in, they like, didn't get cash or anything like that, from what I can gather, it was quid tokens. So therefore they had to sell those quid tokens back on the market. So essentially they're doing the same as receiving collectibles, aren't they? They're receiving those quid tokens and then they're sticking it back on the market, which means that then you're then buying those quid tokens if you decided to follow their advice, you're buying those quid tokens and you're essentially paying their wages. So if you look at it that way, you could say that every single influencer and every single, every single person who is in this game in general uh, is out to get something, which is true. Whether it be views, whether it be recognition, whether it be whatever. Nobody cares about you as a person in crypto. It's just the way it is. It's a very selfish game. Because at the end of the day, you know, as much as you try and spin it that you're looking after your followers and you want them to, you know, make sure that your followers know what's going on so that that way they can invest wisely and blah, blah, blah. As long as they invest in something and then you get out before you, they do, you don't really care at the end of the day. So, you know, that's just my personal point of view on it. Um, nobody cares about anyone in crypto. They're just out for number one. And that's just the way it is. Because if they don't get out before you, then you'll end up dumping on them. The same as they'll end up dumping on you. And it's, it is what it is. But anyway, uh, let me know what you think of the video uh, down in the comments below. I'll be uh, interested to hear your thoughts. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for joining us. As always, don't forget, crypto can go up, it can make you loads of money, or it can go down, and you can completely lose your shirt and everything you own. So uh, do invest wisely, don't take anything as financial advice, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye for now.